fellow solar enthusiasts. If you're like me, you love playing with solar, but it can get really expensive over time, especially with adding in the prices of solar panels, a solar charge controller, and even batteries or a grid tie inverter. Well, one of the places you can save money on is a solar charge controller. Now, there are great American-made solar charge controllers that can handle 25, 30, 40, 60, even 80 amps. But you're looking for five to a thousand dollars easily for those solar charge controllers, and they work great. But that's a big expenditure, especially if you're building a smaller system, say two to three hundred watts for a shed or portable, some set like that. You can Get the solar charge controller cheaper if you shop around and you know what you're looking for, uh, looking for a quality device. Now, I have a brand new China-based solar charge controller. Did I just say China? Yeah, Chinese-based solar charge controller. I know, at least 85% of the charge controllers that come out of China are usually junk. Either the solder points suck on them, they're fake marked, especially when it comes to uh, MPPT charge controllers. A lot of them will say they're MPPT and for people who don't know what that is, that is maximum power point tracking. I'll get back to that in one second for people who don't know what that is yet. Um, will become uh, fake marked from the factory or wherever it's built and you come to plug it in, you try it out and it's nothing more than a cheap PWM. Now let's get back to the two terms. PWM and MPPT. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. You usually find this in the cheaper charge controllers, anything from $15 up to maybe $80 or $90 if it can handle like 40 or 50 amps. What happens in a PWM charge controller is you have your solar panel power coming into the charge controller and then you have battery power coming out from the charge controller over to the battery. So it sends a charge over to it. Basically a PWM, when your battery is dead, say 10 and a half, 11 volts or so, Basically, it switches MOSFET, which is an electronic switch, on and just directly connects the power. So it goes from the solar panel over to your battery and it's just acting as a switch. That's all it is. When your battery finally hits full charge, it will turn itself off and then flip itself on and off, on and off, so it can maintain a voltage, say 13.2 or 13.5, wherever the float voltage is programmed for that one for that style of battery. Now, the problem with this is. The solar panel works at a certain voltage. You can get, say you got a 200 watt solar panel. It's rated at 17.5 volts as is maximum power point, roughly, give or take a volt, depending upon the conditions, how sunny, how shady it is, and what angle the panel is set at. What happens is, when you directly connect that solar panel to the battery, the solar panel's voltage goes from an open circuit of 21 voltage, drops through the maximum amount of power, so you can get that full 200 watts of power from the solar panel, drops past that 17 or 18 volt level, and goes all the way down to the voltage of the battery, say 10 or 11. At this point, your 200 watt solar panel just became a 50 watt solar panel. You got this big honking 5 foot solar panel that's working like this, because it can't get the voltage correct, so you lose a lot of power in the process. As the battery charges up, gets up to 13.5, your 200 watt solar panel might get up to 75 or 100 watts, but you're talking 13 and a half volts for the battery versus a solar panel loves 17 and a half to make that 200 watts. And that's the inherent problem of a PWM. Now when you switch over to MPPT, which stands for Maximum Power Point Technology, Basically what it does, it has a specialized DC to DC converter built into the charge controller. It takes in the panel, the uh, power from the solar panel, uh, normally open circuit, say 21 volts or so. It'll take it in and it'll see the batteries at 10 and a half volts on the opposite side. What it does is it will take the 21 volts, bring it to the solar charge controller, change some of the voltage into extra amperage, then push it back out at 10 and a half, 11 volts, as the voltage of the battery comes on up, as extra amperage. That's where you get your wattage. And that's how your 200 watt solar panel, even with a 10 and a half volt battery, you can still get your 200 or very close to it, probably like say 190, 185 in real life uh, 
uh, scenarios. You will actually be able to charge and actually get that full 200 watts out of that solar panel versus 50 watts with a dead battery. So that's what it happens. Okay, after that whole definition thing, let me show you what I'm going to be playing with today. Today it is made by MPP Solar. Comes with a nice little instruction booklet. It's only about 8, 10 pages or so, but it's enough to get you started. And they actually translated from Chinese or whatever to English fairly well. I didn't see too many problems with the uh, language translation. This is the unit itself. It is a 25 amp, 12 volt solar charge controller with MPPT. Now, we're going to open this up in one second and actually see there's a few criteria that you always look at when you get an MPPT charge controller to make sure it's genuine before you even put power to it. Or if this is just another one of those Chinese knockoff fakes that end up just throwing in the trash. And in that case, I just wasted $120. The other part that came with the kit is six of these little connectors. Basically, you crimp your wire onto it. It's got a little piece of six out. It's really thick on the end of it. And that goes into your six ports. Two for the solar panel, two for the battery, and two for your load. So, let me switch the camera around. We're going to open this up and see if this is probably the real deal or if I just got ripped off. Okay, let's take a look at the unit itself. It's a black plastic enclosure on the front. These heat sinks right here, they are fake there for show. These are just plastic. You've got three little LEDs, one for solar, one for battery, one for a wiring fault, and you have a switch to control the backlight, uh, setting the battery type, and a mute button if the alarm's going off for some reason. You have a multifunction display, which you'll be able to see operating once we go outside with this. And right below, you have your solar inputs, your battery inputs, and your load inputs. You also have uh, a 8-pin phone wire connection, or um, networking cable. I've checked the um, instruction manual. There is no information on this, plus on their website, there's no information on this. This must be a feature that is not implemented into it. Now, if we turn the unit over, you have real metal heat sinks here. You got a nice big long one going right here, and you got a big one right here. You have two mounting areas, and this is the only thing I've seen not so good about it so far. The way you mount this is you basically screw two screw two screws into wood and it slides into these little grooves here so it sort of just hangs there on the back of the wood. I gotta find a better way of mounting it but so far that's the only problem I've seen with it is the mounting is not the best it just floats there. So let's turn it on over and open it on up and we'll see if we got these uh, few items in here that are truly make it an MPPT controller. Now there are two separate pieces of wiring here. You have wires running from this main circuit board over to the top area, which is your LEDs and your button. Then you got a smaller ribbon cable right here, which runs over to your uh, LCD display. Now while we're in here, one of the first things you want to look at to see if this is a true MPPT controller is these big round coils of wire called torrids. If it has one or more of these, chances are it is real. And it can't be just one, two, three windings and that's it and just be air. There's a ferrite core, an iron core inside wrapped around here. These are real. So that's a good sign right there. We've got a few capacitors. We have a few more um, surface mounted inductors, one here and there are two tiny ones downside here. There is a header board right here, which I'm going to assume is used for programming the 48 pin microcontroller. I can't tell which microcontroller it is because there's a piece of paper over it with just a number, but that's also a very good sign. There's actually a microcontroller inside here. You have your regular power bars, your power bus, and you have power MOSFETs and more power MOSFETs and a uh, dual diode right here. So everything in here 
says, guess what? This is probably an MPPT charge controller. And also, they didn't skimp on the production on it. You have surface mounted capacitors. If um, when you get yours, you look at the soldering, the soldering is not shoddy. There's not any um, bad solder joints, cold solder joints, um, solder bridges. Everything looks actually very professional. Now, for the heat sink part of it, the way this works, let me tip this over, is all these MOSFETs and the one double diode goes into this metal block, which passes through and runs the whole length of right here. I believe this is mostly your output section, but I could be wrong. So, you actually have a lot of heat sink space in here. Now, for the top row of MOSFETs, as your solar power inputs going in here, so I assume this is for your MPPT and your PWM when the batteries are fully charged. That goes through the case, and then again, through the top of it, goes through this smaller top bar. So, they did a very good job of heat sinking this. Now, if you got the 24 volt model, there is an extended heat sink which goes another three or four inches which you can see on their website and actually reading the PDF from their website on these specific charge controllers. So we're going to close it back on up now. We're going to take it on outside. I'm going to plug it into uh, a battery I have that I've drained down to I think about like a 12 or 11 and a half volts or so. This way it's pretty low. And we're going to test it on out. Let's see what it does. Okay, here's my test bed on the outside. I got my 100 amp hour battery, and you can see now the display is on. It's our battery sitting at about 12.3 volts. Let's check it and see how accurate that meter is. So we'll go positive and negative here. Get my fingers out of the way. Get a good connection. There we go. So sitting at 12.3 volts, and it's reading 12.38, so that's pretty good. Um, right now I have a 15 and 16 watt load on it. It's a converted box fan that runs on DC and is plugged in right through here. You can trace the wire right on back on over to it. It's on medium and I know for a fact that that pulls about 15 watts. Uh, if you put it on low though, it pulls about 5 or 6 watts and doesn't really register it. So anything below 10 watts on the load section, it's not going to pick it up. If I put it back on medium, it'll pull 15 watts and it shows it perfectly fine. And our solar panel at the moment is right over here. It's covered because I don't have it connected all the way yet and I don't feel like getting shocked. This is a 24 volt, 200 watt solar panel from Canadian Solar. And we're going to hook it up and see what we get here. So first, I already have the positive connected. Let me connect the negative, which is right here. Okay. Now, even with the solar panel covered, you can see it's still making enough electricity that it sees the solar panel. Believe it or not, there actually is a green light on right there. I don't know if you can tell, and that just says the battery is connected. Of course, right now, since the solar panel is still covered, we're not really making any uh, amperage right now or any wattage charge. So. And second, when I have Triana uncover the solar panel, we should see this wattage and amperage charging current come on up. So, if you wouldn't mind, love, take the cover off and let's see what it does. There's our 200 watt solar panel. It's going down here. And amperage, the wattage is still going on up. I'm going to shut the fan off for the time being. Take off the load. I remember this is. This panel is 24 volts at 7 amps, so we're only getting 90 watts. It's laying on the ground right now. Let's give it a minute or two and see if it can uh, trace the uh, MPPT and give me a little more current. Okay, let me read the back of this uh, solar panel here. It says, voltage at peak power, 28.9 volts and current at peak power. 6.93. The open circuit amperage is 7.68 amps. And as you can see on the screen right now, we're getting 10 amps out of it right now. So the MPPT 
function on this actually is working. We just got three more charging amps. Now you can see the panel voltage is sitting at about 25, 24, 25 volts. That's the MPPT actually working because it's only a 12 volt battery. So you can see we're already getting 10, 10.6 amps right there, 186 watts. This one, this unit is actually working the way it's supposed to. Okay, so let's recap. We have an MPPT charge controller manufactured by MPP Solar uh, over actually in Taiwan, even though I said China before, they're all basically the same to me. They're not American made. This is the real deal, as we saw on our outside tests. My solar panel had a maximum uh, power point of about 6 amps, and this was pushing out 10, 11. Actually, actually, I turned off the camera, I saw a quick blip of about 12, and the sun was getting really good, and the clouds weren't playing around with us. So, this does actually work. It does do what it's intended to. Now, the display on this is uh, not bad at all. The, um, I would say most of them are within 5% tolerance. Uh, for the voltage, the wattage, the amperage ratings and everything. A few things I did note, which um, it's not really a big deal because the screen is meant to be a um, quick look at, uh, not meant to be like precision controlled or like a uh, multimeter. So uh, as for the uh, battery voltage, it's usually good within about a half a volt. That's what I've noticed. The uh, charging amperage cannot read below 0 0.6 volts or 6... Or, 0 0.6 amps or 6 tenths of an amp. Uh, below that it cannot register. Uh, that's not really a big deal anyway because if you're usually on a 200 or 300 watt solar panel and you're down to uh, a half an amp of power it's really cloudy. You're not getting anything to begin with anyway. Um, the um, output load wattage rating cannot really read below 10 watts. Again chances are if you're pulling less than 10 watts, you're not really touching your batteries that much to begin with anyway. So uh, anything above the 0 0.6 amps for the charging or the load uh, above 10 watts, I would put it probably with about 3 to 5% accuracy. So it gives you a good indication of what your system is currently doing and how it's being stressed. So it's not perfect, but for $120, $130 shipped, I would say this is actually a very good unit. Now, you're not going to go out and buy this model and try to switch your whole house over to solar. This is meant for a smaller solar installation, whether it be a shed or a backup or something like that. It's meant for a two to 300 watt solar panel and 100 to 200 amp hour batteries on average. That's what I would normally hook up to this. Uh, as for the software in it, I have been in contact with the company, and believe it or not, their uh, customer service is definitely better than I would have expected. They uh, respond to my emails uh, about 10.30 every night, which I would assume would put about early uh, morning or mid-morning over in Taiwan. So they were very quick to respond. They were very helpful, and they um, also sent me a beta firmware for me to try out. The only bug that is actually in this right now, and again, uh, personally for me, I find it to be a very trivial bug, is once you uh, put a load on this unit, when it's powered on, um, it will not automatically shut itself off. There is no timer. So it will pull uh, 80 milliamps, roughly, all the time, even with the backlight off. The backlight only pulls 5 milliamps. So it has an 80 milliamp drain all the time when the unit, the screen is on and it's actually operating. You'll hear a little tiny hum from the uh, DC to DC converter running in there all the time. Honestly, on a 100 or 200 amp hour battery bank, that is a trivial amount of load. You're talking one watt. That's what it basically equivalents is out to, about 0.8 to one watt. Um, this is a trivial thing and it's not a big problem at all. If you hook this up to a 10 amp hour battery, yeah, you would have a problem, but then again, you wouldn't be hooking a 10 amp hour battery to this. This That battery would be way too small, hooked up to a 200 amp or a 200 watt solar panel, you would end up frying that battery too fast. So as long as you keep this used in the specifications that it's meant for, two to 300 watt solar panel, probably about one to 200 amp hours of battery capacity, this is a very viable unit. And um, I'm going to be happy to play with it and use it. And I personally have to give them a good recommendation. And just to make sure, no, I did not get paid by the company to make this at all. This is 
just unbiased me. Hey, people like me like to play with smaller solar setups, and I wanted to save money. I didn't want to spend five hundred dollars on a solar charger controller. Look into this. Uh, about one hundred thirty dollars. The website I will put down into the description. It's uh, mppsolar.com. Again, the model number for this is PCM-3012. I bought this all actually off of eBay from a Taiwan supplier direct and shipped to me in about 10, 10 to 14 days, I believe. So not bad at all for regular shipping um, going overseas. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in um, the comments area and I will get back to you. And if uh, I missed anything, I will add it into the description. By all means, please read the description. I will always have more information there that I forgot to blab about while making this video. So thank you very much and um, subscribe to my channel because I will be using this in the next few weeks as I build the uh, solar camping battery box version 3.0.